Good morning, we're at Green Thumb Nursery and today we're going to talk about ponds. Um, this is one of the main features of our nursery. As you walk into our entrance, you will come upon our pond. And kids go right to it, parents go right to it. So I know that this is like a magnet for us, uh, especially when it's hot, the water flowing and, and just what's going on. It kind of makes you feel like you've got nature in your backyard. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the plants that we have. Um, this right here, these are water hyacinths. And these are floaters. And they bloom during the summer months. And they're just so pretty. The flower only lasts about a day. But as you watch it unfold, and if you've got a bunch of them, they just look like little blue, blue flames in, in the pond. So really, they're cool. And what these are, these are called floaters. And basically, they just float. Um, the root is in the water. The part of the plant that's out of the water is up out of the water. And they float along. These guys are very good for, for uh, filtering the water. They take a lot of the bad stuff out of the water and turn it into greenery on top. They've been used in uh, sewer reclamation, places like that where they help to clean up the water. Um, I have also the elephant ears. These guys like the pond, like the water. There's a lot of plants that we have in the ground that will actually go into a pond type situation. So we have our fish that we carry. These are um, flame platies, and they are okay for outside. They will actually survive our winters here in California. I've been selling these for probably about 15, 20 years, and they are tried and true. They are live bearers, so they have their little babies, and they um, multiply fairly regularly on a regular basis, kind of like rabbits and um, they're an awesome addition to the pond. Uh, here is another one, this is called Parrot's Feather, and this one is also a floater. And the way this one works is it just keeps growing and growing and growing and growing and growing. So as it grows, you can either let it grow and just kind of spread out, or you can unbundle it. There's a, a lead weight that goes around the base of it. You can unbundle it, bundle it back again, up a little bit higher, cut off the excess and you can keep it in a nice little and you just plop it in the water. This is probably the easiest planting job you will ever do. <laughs> you just plop it in the water and it does its thing. Um, don't have to worry about overwatering. Underwatering is an issue because but you want to make sure you got water in there and you're good. So there's no overwatering, nothing like that. And the plants are awesome. They perform well. These ones here can, can grow in a full sun to a part sun. The hyacinths want full sun if you're going to get some flower, if you want flowers off them. But if they don't get enough sun, they won't flower, but they will still grow and thrive. So they'll work in a low light or a, a high light. Most ponds will do a little bit better in a morning sun or a late afternoon sun rather than sticking them in a real hot all day sun because then you're having to have a little more problems with algae issues. If there's a lot of sun hitting the water or going penetrating the water, then you're going to have green water. So we don't want that. Obviously, we want nice, clear water. If you have a balance, you're not going to have the green water. As you can see in our bigger pond here, we have a water run that has, at the end, I have a skimmer that runs up to a bio box with a waterfall up here in the waterfall. And that has rocks inside of it. And that gives surface area for the beneficial bacteria to attach. And the beneficial bacteria are the ones who kind of keep that water nice and clear. So as the cycle of the pond goes, is you have the plant material in there. Then the plant material breaks down and falls to the bottom. Dead fish, our air is dirty, so we get a lot of dirt in the pond as well. And that settles down. Well, if that's not taken care of by the beneficial bacteria, it starts to get stinky. And that's where you get swamps. If we have a nice, healthy balance and we have the right bacteria working their, doing their job, then we have a nice, clear pond. As you can see, you can see my hand in here. This is clear water. This, this water is, is nice and clear. There's no green. And as you can see, I have 60 to 70% of the surface area covered with plant material. 
And that's kind of our goal. If you can get that, usually you're not gonna have a problem with algae. Algae grows because the nutrient is there and there's not anything blocking the sun to penetrate the water. If there's no sun, there's no algae. If there's no excessive nutrient, there's no algae. So if you have fish and you're feeding those fish, of course they're gonna poop more, and that can cause algae blooms. That can cause more algae. So you don't really need to feed your fish. I got lots of fish in here and I don't feed them. Now every now and again, I'll throw a little bit of food in there, maybe once a week or so, just to, if you're wanting to train them to get used to you, you can do that, but you don't need to feed them. They will take care of themselves. Mother Nature does this all on her own. So as you can see here, I have a diverse um, collection of plants along here. I have, these are cattails, and they're sitting right down on the bottom of the pond. This pond is about 18 inches deep. And if you're gonna have fish, especially koi, you're gonna need to make your pond a little bit deeper so you don't get critters in there. But usually if you want plants in your pond, you can't have koi, unfortunately. They like to eat the plants. So if you, have, if you really want koi, you could do like a pond with koi in the bottom and then have like a filter pond up above that spills into your other pond and that's where you put your plants and then you have your koi down on the bottom. I do have people that have koi with plants, but it's, it's tricky. Sometimes you can do it, sometimes you can't. So what I have in here, again, I have more floaters. These are lettuce, water lettuce, and these float. These ones right here, they do get a little flower, but it's way down in the bottom. Their beauty is the actual plant, which looks like lettuce when it's floating. Unfortunately, this plant will die in the winter time. Uh, sometimes it comes back, mostly it doesn't. So you usually you just redo them. The hyacinths will winter over as long as it doesn't get too cold. Then I also have my water lilies, which are kind of like the Cadillac. Now, as you can see this one here, this one is actually a night bloomer. And he blooms, he opens up in the evening, opens up at night, and then he's open in the morning, and then he will close up. Now these other ones, as you can see here, are day bloomers, and there's another one over here. And those open up during the day. Now if you work, you don't get to see your lilies except for maybe on your days off. So the night bloomer is a good choice for you if you want to be able to see your flowers at night. And if you put a little up light or a little lighting on those, they're really very sweet. And these guys are fragrant. So if you've ever taken the time to, if you can get down in there and smell them, they are very fragrant. You can cut them and put them in vases. They open and close a couple days and then they die. Now the water lilies um, are what we call a submerged plant. So these guys are in pots. If I can pick this one up, he's heavy. <laughs> As you can see, they're in pots. So they're easy to maintain, easy to plant. You just drop them in the pond and it's planted. Woohoo! So easy. So those guys are probably the best show of color that's in the pond, the fragrance, and the lily pads cover the water. And if I have my frog friend who is been hanging out here with me. I do have a, a bullfrog in here. He'll get up on the pads just like you see out in nature. So they're really very cool. Now these, uh, these plants along the edge are called bog plants. And these guys go, you can put them at least up to the top of the pot. As you can see, these two are also in pots. And when you put them in the pond, you could submerge them to just to where the pot is not showing. Some of the plants I do have, there's a few of them that don't like that, like the horsetail rush looks like bamboo. That one, the, the, the water is right at the dirt level. So you might be creative on how you can cover the edge of the pot up. But, and I do have, believe it or not, I have the tropical milkweed is also can be used as a pond plant. And this plant, Again, you would just put it right at the soil level. They don't want to be up over the top of the pot. These guys here will tolerate the water, but they don't want to be drowned. So this is, and this one here, this is a kufia. This is a plant that we put out in the ground. This one here was also, I wouldn't put it too deep, but it will add a beautiful color to your pond, a different texture. 
These are canna lilies, as you well probably know. If you're, if you're a gardener, you've seen canna lilies. These guys can actually go a little bit deeper. You can actually put these, the taller the plants, the deeper they can go. So the shorter the plant, you just want to keep it right at the top of the pot. I've got a huge selection of different types of plants here. I even have ginger back in here. This is actually a butterfly ginger and it's gonna get a white fragrant flower. So very versatile. These plants are awesome plants. So if you don't have enough space to do a big pond like this, bummer, but you can still enjoy these plants in a smaller setting. So as you can see over here, I have a whiskey barrel with a whiskey barrel liner. Fortunately, right now we're having a hard time getting those liners, but um, I'm sure you can get them online if you need to. It's plastic, that's all it is. It fits down into the whiskey barrel. This right here is a miniature hardy lily. Now there's two types of lilies. There's a hardy lily and there's a tropical lily. The hardy lilies go by length of day. So as the days get shorter, they go dormant. Tropical lilies, on the other hand, are just that. If the water is warm, they're going to continue on going. If it's above, above 50 degrees, then a lot of times they'll continue on with their pads, keep on going. The hardy lilies, as soon as the days get short, they stop sending up the pads to the surface, and then they just have little bitty pads over the top of the pot. Those are called indicator leaves to let the plant know when the days are long enough to send those pads back up, up to the top. Tropical lilies, when they go dormant, there's absolutely nothing there, just a pot of mud. If it gets below 50 to 60, uh, 40 degrees, it could actually kill that bulb. So there is ways that you could take care of that. I'm not gonna go over that now, but it is doable. So anyway, so we could do something like this, and then you could just add like a little water lettuce to it. We could just throw some water lettuce in here. Now I got my duck in here because I was taking up space. But these guys are really cool too. We sell these as well. And they just float in there. So we'll add a little water lily. Let me, or I mean a lettuce. Let me go grab a thing of parrot feather. We're gonna throw the parrot's feather in there. And voila, we got we got us ourselves a pond. Now if I really wanted to get creative, I could throw one of these guys in there. Now, he's kind of deep, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the pond plant person's baby uh, way to fix the levels in your pond. I'm just gonna take this clay pot, you can use bricks, and I'm going to put that down in the bottom, and then I'm gonna set this guy on top. So now he's right where he needs to be. So now I've got some floaters, I've got my bog plant, and I've got my lilies in here. Simple as that. So the maintenance on this is once a week, um, I take the, the, the water and I, the hose and I just let it overflow. So it kind of exchanges a little bit of the old water. If you're, if you're putting more than four or five inches of water into a container like this from evaporation, um, you're gonna have to put a dechlorinator. So the, the things that... Things that I use in the pond, this is about it. Now if you have the right balance, you won't need an algicide. If you get a lot of algae, there are things you can use for algae if you don't want to use your plants. But I suggest using the plants. It's much easier. You don't have to keep putting chemicals and things like that in there. This is a dechlorinator. This is going to take out the heavy metals and the chlorine in the water. There's, you can get this at the pet store. That's just a dechlorinator. But this one here actually takes the heavy metals out, which is good. Uh, we don't want a buildup of heavy metals in the pond. This is my fertilizer. They're just fertilizer tablets. And once a month, you're going to put one of these tablets down into the pot, in the mud of the, the pot. So you just stick it down into
just put it in there. Simple Simon. So easy. And you fertilized your plant. This is a ponzyme. And what this does is this helps to build up the enzymes, the, the, the beneficial bacteria in your pond. Now when you first set up a pond, you're going to put water in. Now I've got some containers over here. So you're going to put your water in there. And then we're going to dechlorinate it. And you don't need that much. You're going to put that in there. Then, then I'm going to put a little bit of the Ponzyme in there just to get the beneficial bacteria going. It's not so critical in these smaller containers as it is whoo, more in the pond, but, but it would be helpful if you've got a good sized pot. These smaller pots you probably won't need to mess with this. You're just going to need to let it sit for about two weeks, uh, especially before you put fish in there. If you're going to put fish in, it has to sit for two weeks to get the beneficial bacteria going. Okay, so we got that. I dechlorinated it. And now I can put, I've been putting lotus in these kind of pots. Now you can use any pot that doesn't have a hole in it. Um, so be creative. You could use uh, a wash basin. You could use an old toilet bowl if you wanted to. Um, anything that's going to hold water will work. Uh, this one's kind of nice for like lotus because the lotus, as I have down here, now I'm not going to be getting a whole lot more lotus. They're kind of the end of the season for the lotus, but these are lotus. And one of the fun things we like to do here in the nursery is watch the water droplets on this leaf. Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool how that does that? And it's completely dry. We need to figure out, that is, to me, is so awesome. Anyway, the lotus just needs to have a couple inches of water over the top of the pot. And this pot is about so big, so it fits perfectly in that little container. You don't want these to be too deep. And I do have a full care sheet for the lotus, so if you do purchase a lotus from us, please ask for the care sheet, because it tells you everything you need to know about a lotus. And we do get a lot of people shopping for these. These are heavy feeders, so you have to make sure you're feeding them once a month. Same with the water lilies. You've got to, because they're constantly getting rid of old stuff, putting on new. Getting rid of old, putting on new. Your potted plants, your, your bog plants, feed, if they're up and doing their thing, give them food once a month. Just give them some food, and that'll keep them growing. Now, if you don't want them to grow too big, maybe you want to skip a week or two, or, or a month or two on the fertilizer because these plants will grow. They will get big. They're happy. They love this environment. So, so there's that one there. Now let me show you a real simple, we can do a real simple, this bowl right here. We just got to put something tall in the middle. Something that's going to head over the edge. This is called irisene. So that'll go in there like that. Actually, I think I'm going to put something with a flower in the middle. I want some little height. So that looks good right there. Now maybe something that's got a little texture. I kind of like this guy here for some texture. It's a little bit different leaf. As you can see, I got, I got the thin, long leaves. And then I also want to add something that's going to give it a little more softness to it. And I'm just going to throw some water in here. And then once this gets going, once we get this filled up, now again, if you want fish, you can put fish in here. I do have mosquito fish. I do have rice fish. And they will work okay in a smaller situation like this. The platys have a tendency to jump out. So you don't want to put them in a shallow bowl. And then, as soon as we get some water in here, I will finish this one off. Now, I have people coming in all the time saying, I have a fountain, and I would love to put some plants in the fountain. Unfortunately, if these plants are splashed on, they will die with time. So you can't really, unless you turn your fountain down, 
so it's just dribbling or you don't even use your fountain just have it as a water vessel then the plants will work but unfortunately if the water is constantly splashing on top of these plants then it's not going to it's not going to work the plants are going to eventually rot and die so um, i would love to tell you that you could put something in your fountains but really it's it's difficult and if you if you've had plants around your fountains that are constantly being splashed on usually you notice they die because they don't want water on top of them all the time the part that's in the water wants to be in the water the part that's out of the water wants to be dry okay so we're almost filled right here but these these plants are they take care of themselves basically there is a little maintenance if you've got like for the lilies the old pads are constantly dying um, I usually go through here about every day and pull off the old pads from the day before. The lilies, the flowers will open and close a few days and then they settle down in the water and they're done. You can pinch those off. The more debris you get out of the pond, the less gack you'll have in the bottom of the pond. Okay, so now I've got it filled with water. So now I'm just going to add some more. Give me a little carrot's feather, throw that in there. Maybe some more lettuce. We'll throw that on this side. I could throw a hyphen back here. Let me get one of my big guys. Now right now I do have two types of hyacinths. I have a shorter one and a taller one. The taller one I only have for a short time. So if you want the taller one, you better get it now. And those do multiply. Um, These guys have babies. So once this guy gets big enough and has his own roots, I can remove him and he will be his own person. Now after a while, if you leave, they can get a bunch of them on there. They start sucking the energy off the mother plant. So it'll slowly start to, de to decline. So I do recommend that you break them off if you can. Um, if you have goldfish or koi, sometimes they'll eat the roots off of these. So again, koi usually don't do well with plants, or plants don't do well with koi. They love to eat them. But as you can see here, it didn't take me but what, maybe 10 minutes to put this together. And this is gonna be beautiful all summer long. So I hope that I've given you hope, and I hope that this is an encouragement to you to try to find a way you can put water into your garden. So special shout out to our Garden Share group and Facebook and Instagram and all you guys. Thanks for watching and have